Hey there, I'm Cruzen, and I'll be showing you how to fly and land your VTOLs in KSP. Flying a VTOL is very different from flying a regular plane, and landing can be extremely difficult to do when you're first learning. I'll give you a lot of tips to help you out and guide you through how to make full use of your VTOLs. Hopefully you watched my previous episode on VTOL construction techniques, as I'll be using that design for this video. This video also assumes you've balanced your VTOL properly. If you're having trouble just designing your VTOL, take a minute to go back and watch the previous video. Let's head straight to what I think is the best advice I can give you. Find your hover point. I can't emphasize this enough really. Knowing exactly how much throttle you need to lift off and hover with your VTOL engines is invaluable for taking off, flying, and landing your VTOLs. Finding your plane's specific hover point is very easy and only takes a couple minutes. I won't walk you through how to find this throttle level since it's mostly just trial and error, but be patient with it as jet engines need time to spool up. Every time you change the throttle, give your engines some time. I suggest going up one to two ticks at a time until you find the point where your plane lifts off. Make sure you aren't climbing at more than five meters per second. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more you dial this in, the easier time you'll have when it comes to flying and landing. Once you've found your hover point, commit it to memory or write it down if you plan to use your plane a lot. Keep in mind that this throttle level will change as you burn through your fuel, but unless you have a huge plane, it won't change very much. If your plane is a high thrust to weight ratio with its VTOL engines, you won't be able to finely tune your throttle. This design is a good example of a plane with too much thrust for its size. My hover point is almost exactly between the third and fourth tick of throttle, meaning I have a tough time getting the throttle just right. If you want more room to work with, you'll need to lower your thrust. Now before point 23 came out, I would have recommended angling your engines out sideways. This reduces their vertical thrust depending on how much of an angle you use. However, with the release of version 23, we can actually tweak each engine's thrust output instead. This is best done while inside the space plane hangar. If you right-click your engines, you can use the thrust limiter slider to bring down the engine's maximum thrust. If you have multiple VTOL engines, this setting will automatically apply to all of them if they were placed with symmetry on. If not, you'll need to adjust each one manually. Limiting your thrust like this makes finding your hover point easier and flying becomes much more manageable. Aim for a thrust limiter setting that puts your hover point somewhere around 50% of max throttle while you're still learning. Now that you know how much throttle you need to hover, we can move on to actually flying this thing. Flying in VTOL mode is slightly different than flying normally. From a standstill while hovering, these are what the W, A, S, D, Q, and E keys do. W and S pitch the nose up and down, which is how you will control moving forwards and backwards. A and S control yaw, which is the flat spin left or right. Q and E will roll the plane, which cause the plane to strafe to the left or right. Now before you start zipping around the KSC, there is one basic concept that you should know with VTOLs. Since the thrust from your engines is aimed straight down with respect to your plane, you'll want to imagine an arrow sticking out of the bottom of your plane at all times, pointed downwards. If you want to move a certain direction, you need to point the arrow away from where you want to go. From a standstill, this is fairly intuitive, but once we add in some forward and vertical speed, things get tricky. You can mess around with this in the space plane hangar if you want to turn on the center of thrust indicator. Notice how pressing the A and D keys do not change the direction of the arrow. Your best friend while flying, however, is going to be the nav ball. Keeping a careful eye on the prograde marker will help guide you as you'll quickly find that flying VTOLs is very dissimilar from flying normal planes. Manipulating the prograde marker up or down is done with the W and S keys, with the W key pushing the marker down and the S key pulling the marker up. If you want to move the marker left or right, you'll use the Q or E keys. The A and D keys don't directly affect the prograde marker, but they become useful while turning the plane. Try to keep the marker above or on the horizon line at all times, unless you're trying to descend. I want to give you a really good understanding of how your throttle, forward momentum, and lift affect your flight. I have come up with a drill for you to run, which will give you a good feel for controlling your plane. The drill is fairly simple, but will help teach you altitude control. Easy mode is doing this at low velocities, while hard mode is doing this with a lot of service velocity, going all the way up to max throttle. The basic idea is to practice moving forward, then stopping, all without gaining altitude. Simple enough, right? So get yourself into a hover as best you can, then begin by pitching your nose down by pressing W. Gain some speed and focus on keeping the prograde marker locked on the horizon. This takes a combination of throttle and pitch. At your hover point, you won't be able to pitch down very much before the prograde marker falls below the horizon, but at max throttle, you'll need to be pitched down quite a ways to remain level. To stop, all you need to do at low velocities is simply pitch up above the horizon line. Now you'll notice that when you try hard mode, as you gain more horizontal speed, your wings will start to come into play, adding extra lift. This extra lift is what makes this drill moderately difficult, coming to a stop from high velocities without gaining any altitude. So in order to stop and still do the drill right, you'll need to actually reduce your throttle well below your hover point. Then, wait for your prograde marker to fall below the horizon line, and then pitch up. At this point, you'll bring your throttle back to the hover point, and you'll be slowing down fairly quickly. How fast you slow down depends on how far you pitch up. This is hard to do without gaining some altitude or crashing, so try it a couple times to get the hang of it.
Alright, so next up is turning. This is actually fairly easy to do if you have plenty of forward speed, as your wings are providing lift. In this case, you can just turn like you normally would, banking to one side and pitching up in that direction to turn just like a normal plane. However, when you're flying more slowly, most of your lift is coming from your engines, which makes turning trickier. If you're doing tight turns at low speeds, make sure you have your throttle set above your hover point. The more you bank into a turn, the less vertical thrust you have, which is going to make you want to drop in altitude quickly. Slow, sharp turns are where you'll probably run into the most problems. The biggest thing you have to figure out is how you want to control your camera during a turn. Some people like to lock their camera by pressing the V key and switching to chase mode. This helps eliminate the need for moving the camera during a turn. I prefer to just manually move it, but I will usually move the camera before I start the turn. After that, just experiment for yourself. Some people might have more success by spinning with the A or D keys to get the plane facing the direction they want to turn first. After you do that, you want to pitch down and bank into the turn. If you're really struggling though, I'd recommend gaining some altitude before you start a turn and then spin into it. This gives you a little buffer against crashing, which can save you while you're still learning. Once you're more comfortable, however, bump up the difficulty by zigzagging through the KSC at a certain altitude, like 80 meters or so. Okay, so now we get onto the most difficult part of flying VTOLs, landing. You can usually just wing it when it comes to flying around in VTOL mode, but landing is kind of an art form. Balancing the proper amount of thrust needed to descend and touch down softly can be difficult at first, but since you should have a good grasp of where your hover point is, you'll be better equipped to tackle landing now. For starting off, you'll want to practice landing by doing shortened versions of your normal landings. This is technically a S-toll, or short takeoff and landing procedure. To practice this, all you need to do is modify the drill we were doing earlier, except instead of stopping and staying in a hover, you'll be stopping and landing instead. So set up like you did before by getting into a hover. Go forward and gain some speed and then drop your throttle a couple of ticks below your hover point and glide. Since you have VTOL engines, your plane will glide much easier than a normal plane would, which will allow you to touch down at very low speeds. Slowly pitch up as your prograde marker falls below the horizon, and your speed should drop fairly quickly. Just guide your plane down to the ground by keeping an eye on your vertical speed gauge and your prograde marker. You can land with your parking brakes on as well if you like. Once you've got a good feel for short landings, then you can move on to vertical landings. The keys to a good VTOL landing are planning ahead and keeping your throttle close to your hover point. You want to set up your landing so that you're about 50 meters above where you want to land and approaching at a fairly low speed. You want to reduce the actual distance that your plane drops vertically over your target landing spot. Don't try to land by coming to a dead stop 300 meters over your landing spot and then try to descend vertically that whole way. It can be done, but it's more difficult than it needs to be. The best way to do this is to do almost the exact same thing you did with the STOL procedure, except at the very end, you'll kill the rest of your horizontal speed by pitching up to about 10 to 20 degrees very quickly and pitching back down once you've lost most of your speed. A common problem with this one is that you might have too much speed when you pitch up, which causes you to gain altitude. If you do this and your throttle is well below your hover point, you'll end up dropping like a brick. So if this happens and you climb a little bit before you've lost your horizontal speed, bring your throttle up to your hover point and maybe just a touch more, which will help bring you down softly. While you're learning, you'll find that it's pretty hard to get out of control if your throttle is close to the hover point. You'll always be just a quick adjustment away from soaring back in the air by flooring the throttle in an emergency. As you get more experienced, you can do whatever you want with the throttle, but always keep that hover point in mind. Well, hopefully you've got a better grasp of how to land a VTOL now. It can take some practice, and there are other ways to do it, but this should be enough to get you started. Try landing on anything and everything you can to get some extra practice. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and if it helped, be sure to like the video and leave a comment down below. If you're still struggling, don't hesitate to let me know, and I'll see if I can help you out some more. Take it easy.